Gunmetal, a fast-paced arcade-style game with a very cool game mechanic. Seeing games like Gunmetal being released, it's no wonder why Rage Software went bankrupt. I'm Hitch from Strange Little Games, and I'm going to tell you why you should play this game. I'm Powerhouse from Powerhouse Reviews, and I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't. And this is, is Review Wars. Wars. With an alien invasion in full force, you'll play as Earth's last line of defense. The gunmetal war machine is a mechanized warrior that can turn into a jet at any time. This gives the game an interesting combat strategy of turning into a heavily damaging yet slow-moving robot, or a very agile hit-and-run style jet fighter. You and your AI allies will battle through several fast-paced levels, with missions from escorts, city protection, and defeating giant battle cruisers. To keep things fresh, new weapons are added in every level, and with the odds stacked against you, the battles are exciting and challenging. The basic concept of gunmetal boils down to this. You play as a pilot on a huge war machine that can transform into a jet. It does sound awesome, and there are a few moments that shine through, but for the most part, the execution is extremely flawed. The game is divided up into many short levels, minus a couple of missions with the game, most of them consist you defending your allies. In these missions, all you're really doing is flying to one area, destroy the enemies there, rinse, and repeat. There should have been more assault missions or missions that make you feel like you're part of a huge battle in a large scale war. That would have not only added some replay value, but could probably make the game a little bit more interesting. Levels are designed to be very wide open. This is to create points of interest or conflict. You may be battling an enemy on one point of the map, but then you're alerted that a second enemy group is attacking your base. By having these long distances to travel, you get this time is of the essence feeling and you gotta get there now. This adds to the sense of urgency of the battles and also allows you to enjoy the sense of speed when using the jet. One of the biggest wasted potentials this game has is in the level design. The game features wide open levels where you can roam around in, However, you rarely get to explore these since the missions play out so linear. Most of the missions involve you flying to one point, then moving on to the next. There are a few things like the snow missions right here that give the player more freedom on how to play the level. More non-linear missions would have really benefited the game in the long run and definitely give it that much needed replay value. This game also appeared on the original Xbox, so its creation did have a joystick in mind, which I used when I played. Arcade-style games always feel better when you use one of these things. Both keyboard and joystick can be configured for your personal comfort and is always an appreciated feature. And the controls are great and responsive. You especially notice it at moments when you're about to crash into the ground and pull out in less than a second impact. You need good controls in a game like this, and this one does not disappoint, especially with the joystick. Controls can make or break a game and here they demolish at least one half of this title. The game is an arcade style shooter, so the controls are easy enough to understand. The mech controls fine with the keyboard and mouse, but the jet controls horribly. It is definitely designed with a joystick in mind, which I haven't had one in ages. The problem with the keyboard and mouse is how it turns rapidly when you move the mouse. Pressing left and right on the keyboard does a barrel roll, which feels extremely awkward, especially when I'm trying to turn. This makes it unnecessarily difficult to aim the shot, especially when there are multiple enemies close by. I end up having to fly far away and then come back just to give myself a better chance of destroying the enemies. Now this is probably a game you're only going to play once, and you know what, that is perfectly fine. I had a good time when playing it and that's really all you need sometimes. It's not too long of a game either, but sometimes you don't have to artificially inflate the length. Gunmetal knows when to stop and it ends at pretty much the right time. You get your fill, but it doesn't stuff you. Gunmetal is an extremely short game and doesn't offer much replay value. It took me exactly one sitting to beat this game. Once you beat the game, that's it. Sure, you can replay some of the older levels and try to get a better time, but that's literally beating a dead horse. There's nothing left to do, so there's no reason to do the same thing over and over again for an already repetitive title. I found this game to be a great challenge. The last few levels just got crazy difficult, and I had to play the last couple levels several times. It took me like two days to get through it, and yes, it was frustrating, but it certainly was satisfying too when you actually pull it off. So it certainly gets challenging at the end, but it's not impossible. For me, I didn't find this game too hard. There were a few unnecessary difficulty spikes towards the latter portion of the game, but other than that, this game was a breeze. 
Hitch doesn't quite have the skills in video games that I do, so this game probably took him two days instead of one. If the missions were longer and a bit more difficult, then it probably would have took me about two sittings and Hitch about seven. With its arcade style combat, massive scale battles, and transforming robots, Gunmetal is a little gem of a game and I'm glad I gave it a go, I was really surprised. Rage Software has always struggled with creating high paced shooters such as Expendable, and just like that game, Gunmetal isn't worth recommending. Steer clear of this title and you'll be well off. Bigger or newer doesn't automatically make a game enjoyable. Sometimes being simple with a well-implemented concept is just enough to give a game a fun experience. And this one doesn't disappoint. It's a fun game to play, simple as that. Take it from a fan of Rage Software, this definitely isn't one of their better titles. With so many amazing fast-paced indie shooters coming out nowadays, bursting with content and depth, there isn't a single reason to play this game. This one may not be an amazing game, but what it does, it does it well, and it does it right. You'll find it difficult to contest that you didn't have fun playing this. Gunmetal boasts an action-packed experience with a fun transforming robot mechanic. And I really think it's worth checking out, it's pretty cool. Robots are cool, and jets are cool. The concept of transformation is nice, but this doesn't hide the fact that this game provides a shallow experience and is sorely lacking in all areas. My recommendation? Play one of the Transformer games. Or better yet, play one of the old school Armor Core games from the PS1 and PS2. Those games were awesome. Or even Dynasty Warriors Gundam if you want something fast paced and more modern. 